Hey, good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon to all our 12th Monarchs out there in Monarch Nation coming off a 51-35 win over Southern Mississippi that puts our record at 7-3. and three. Overall, 5-1 and one, uh, in Conference USA and very excited about the fact that we are 5-0 and oh at home uh, this year. Uh, in our eight years of playing football, we have never had a undefeated home season. So with that win, that still keeps that possibility alive and also we remain in contention to win the Eastern Division of Conference USA with, with two weeks to go, which is very exciting for our program. Uh, in terms of this game, it was critical. We got off to a fast start. We were up 21-0, uh, 11 minutes into the game, three turnovers by our defense. That uh, We had drive starts on the Southern Miss 5, 28 and 43 that our offense converted. Four touchdowns uh, in the third quarter. We led 42 to seven, four minutes into the third quarter, and then uh, got smacked in the mouth with adversity. Southern Miss, which is a very good football team, scored 21 consecutive points to cut the lead to 42 to 28. And our defense responded at that point, scoring nine straight points with a, a safety uh, and a touchdown. So it was a, a really good way for us to end the game, but certainly a lot of things we know we need to improve on from a special teams performance. This was really a bounce back performance from the Marshall game where we did not perform well. We were solid uh, starting with the opening kickoff. Zach Pascal returned at 53 yards. Really good blocking by that unit. We also had Brandon Simmons, who was a player that not a lot of people uh, hear Brandon's name. Uh, he had a 29 yard return in this game, played very good for us uh, on special teams and that was critical. Uh, for field position in this game. Bailey Cade had a 37.8 yard average and he had five punts inside the 20 yard line. I emphasize that because the field position in this game, um, Southern Miss average drive start was the 26 yard line. Our average drive start was the 45. That's almost two first down difference in the game, which was crucial. And, and Brad Davis was seven for seven uh, on his extra points. So overall, good performance there. Defensively, five turnovers, six sacks, 11 TFLs for minus 66 yards, five force fumbles, four recovered fumbles, and an interception, which is probably the best uh, performance in terms of what we call havoc plays uh, that we've had as a program. We, we really needed it in this game. Anthony Wilson with 17 tackles and a sack. TJ Ricks, 11 tackles, two forced fumbles, two recovered fumbles. That's, that's 28 tackles from our two inside linebackers. And then someone that, that quietly has been really good this year for us, Sean Carter our safety. Uh, he had eight tackles. He forced a fumble. Sean's name isn't a name that you hear a lot uh, because of some of the performances we've been having on defense, but it's clearly one of our smartest players on defense. When, when you look during a game and you see somebody motion or make an adjustment, you can usually find Sean Carter making sure that everybody uh, is coordinated with whatever the check is. He's an extremely intelligent player, and I'm really happy for him and, and for our team the way he's playing right now. Uh, Bumi Rotimi with two sacks in this game. He now holds the single season record at Old Dominion with, with seven sacks, um, still with uh, at least two more games to play. He's playing excellent football right now. Rashad Coward scored a touchdown. Zimenez and Fox each had a sack, as did Tim Ward. So those five guys I mentioned in the defensive line had five uh, of our sacks in the football game. Uh, they're playing at a, at a very high level right now. Overall, this was a solid performance. We've got some areas that we uh, we need to clean up. We gave up a lot of explosive plays in this game, which we had not been doing, which you've also got to give a lot of credit to Southern Miss and the way they performed. Offensively, zero turnovers, six touchdowns. We only ran 50 plays in this game for 320 yards, and the reason is we were three for 12 uh, on third down. If you're not converting on third down, you're not going to run a lot of plays, and that's why we only ran 50 plays in this game. David Washington was solid. Again, 12 for 18, 144 yards, two touchdowns. He was only sacked one time in this game when he clearly could have been sacked multiple times. But his ability to scramble, his ability to get out of the pocket, throw the ball away, um, very pleased with, with his level right now. Lowry and Cox combined for 21 carries, 148 yards, four touchdowns. And the reason they didn't have more carries is we didn't have enough plays. I would have loved to see them be combined 
up around 40 carries because obviously they were they were having success I and mean, combined they're averaging seven yards a carry in this game we just did not run enough plays offensively the wide receivers they caught the ball they blocked well uh, our offensive line had a very tough day against a very good Southern Miss team, uh, particularly Southern Miss's defensive line, and we'll look to uh, bounce back this week. The performance by our, our offensive line. Speaking to Florida Atlantic, they're three and seven at this point, one and four overall. Their their head coach Charlie Partridge and their staff have done a phenomenal job uh, keeping this team together throughout the year. They've won their last two games. They beat Rice. Uh, they just beat a very good UTEP team. At home, uh, UTEP's a team we beat on the road by 10. They came back to beat them in this football game in what was a very good game. Uh, they've really had some heartbreaking losses this year. When you look at the middle part of their schedule, they lost four straight games by a TD or less. Uh, and if they win those games, they're they're like us. They're seven and three, four and one. So they've just lost some really heartbreaking games. One of them, the Charlotte game, they complete a Hail Mary pass. They think they win, they celebrate, and then video uh, overturns the result, uh, which was the right call, but overturned it. I mean, that's how heartbreaking their losses have been to the point where they were celebrating for a couple minutes in a win. Um, winning on the road in Conference USA is always a major challenge, so this will be. Uh, this is a very good team. They've got really good players. Uh, they're sound schematically in all three phases. They run really good scheme with what they're doing. They're well coached. and For us, we'll need a great week of planning and preparation, which started on Sunday with our coaches meeting and then our practice. Carry that throughout the week and then uh, go to Florida and hopefully execute well on Saturday night. And I'll take questions. <clears throat> David Washington said that uh, uh -huh. his time here that was the best he'd ever seen a defense play here. Um, mm -hmm. Where's that rank for you just in the defense that you see? In terms of the turnovers, the sacks, um, how we forced fumbles, um, the TFLs, it, it was a very good performance. Um, we gave up a lot of explosive plays, which we had not been doing uh, overall. So I, I don't have a ranking on where it is, but there were a lot of really good things. When you talk about all the havoc plays that we had, particularly early in the game, you know, the three turnovers and then following it up uh, with scores. But this was a very, very good performance. Now, um, I think tied for first in the country in turnover margin. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, five to nothing will do with that. Give you a nice boost. Um, how it's still a silly question, but how, how important is that to what you guys are able to do? It's the reason why we're seven and three. Um, you know, for a minus fifteen right now, we're not seven and three. It's it's the reason why we're having the the level of success, and not just when you get a turnover. It's not just getting the ball in the field position. It's also momentum. You, know, you get momentum from that. Your sideline gets excited. All your players get excited. Uh, and we've now, being, being plus 15, uh, that's a lot of momentum. And when you look at the, a great example, Dave, look at the field position in this game. They started their average drive on their 26. Ours was 45. And that's two first downs. First downs are really hard to get. You know, they're hard to come by, but we had an advantage of two first downs in this game, and that was all because our defense took it away five times and we didn't give it to them. So we were forcing them to have to drive 74 yards for scores, and our drives were an average of 55 yards. That's how important turnovers are. Bobby, last year, very painful loss to FAU when they mm -hmm. kicked the late field goal, and you guys you know, weren't did not go to a bowl. In the weeks following that, I know you had said earlier that that was, that was a tough loss to take. Mm -hmm. How tough was it? Did it help? Do you think it helped motivate you guys in the off season? It definitely set the tone for our off season when our all of our players and coaches decided we were, we were going to be accountable throughout the off season, and you know we learned some lessons through spring ball. Uh, that helped us with the 41 players that, that weren't available for that first spring practice because they didn't meet all their goals in the offseason. And then we came out of that and went into the summer program and everybody met their goals. And that was a real eye-opener for all of us. And that all started with um, not being able to go to a bowl game uh, and the motivation. But 
other than that, Harry, that this team right now is of the mindset that it's so much about us and the areas we need to improve. And each week, the opponent is a new challenge. So they're not looking back to last year's game and saying, you know, we didn't beat them, we won't beat them this year because of that. No, we don't have any control over that. That's done. That's in the past. That's history. All that matters now is um, this year's team and the opponent this week, the importance of the game. That's, that's what the players are thinking about. There were a lot of big upsets in college football last weekend. Mm -hmm. um, and on paper, you guys should be a favorite. Do you spend more time this week, the coaches, talking about to the players about overconfidence at this show? Not at all. There's no need to even have the conversation, bring it up. Uh, the team meeting yesterday was all about, um, you know, put it up on the board. Here's the areas we need to improve. Here's where we need to get better. Um, our focus is right now so much on what we need to do because the players are seeing the progress. They're seeing each week there's areas we're getting better. Um, they recognize the areas that we still need to improve. Um, we're trying really hard to play better football each week, and that's what their focus has been on. Um, they've been really good about that. Um, they're taking coaching. They want to be coached. You know, a bunch of them are in the building now. You know, this is this is technically their day off, but they're here. They want to they want to start talking about the game plan. They want they want to get ready. They want to go play. So it's um, it's really got nothing to do with that. And. You know, quite frankly, uh, we haven't earned the right to be overconfident in any game we play. You know, we're we're nowhere near that point right now. Every week, we know we have to play our best football to have an opportunity to win. Just to have an opportunity, we have to play really well, and that's that's a good mindset. That's something that I'm really proud of as a head coach. That that's where we are right now as a program. We recognize we have to play good football. <coughs> I know you guys, you know, want to know every week, and that's. <coughs> You've heard that. Yeah. Want to know? I've heard that once, once or twice. Want to know? We're, we're going to try to be one and zero this week. Would you agree? Mm -hmm. Thank you. But you could be nine and three when the season ends. I mean, do you have any thoughts that you could be nine and three when the season began? I knew there were twelve games when the season began. I was I was very well aware that there were 12 on the schedule. Now, I didn't know we were going to have multiple hurricanes and there were things like, but I was assuming we'd play uh, 12 games. No, I, I didn't have a preconceived notion in my head. I didn't, I just, just wanted to get better. I just wanted our team to improve. I knew that we had a lot of starters back, a lot of guys had played. Um, I know this team right now, there's 101 that could be back next year that we're still we're still developing. You know, we're still playing with a lot of underclassmen right now. Although our seniors have been unbelievable. What a, what a great group this is to work with and be around. Um, but there wasn't a number that was in my head. There were you know the two goals that were the kids put up on the wall was number one to try to win the East and number two go to a bowl. And obviously to do that you've got to win a good amount of your twelve. But I didn't have a number in my head. Anything else for Coach? All right, thank you all for coming. Thank you, 12 Monarchs, for tremendous support Saturday, and we look forward to seeing all of you Saturday night at 6 in Florida.